listen, I want to discuss something involving the Charlotte Hornets as they get ready for their whole draft process. There's a lot of things that have been circulating throughout the airways. Clearly, the Hornets, you know, they have to make it happen. They don't really have any time to really be BSing around. Um, they don't have another year or another they, they, Whatever they're going to do, whether it's through the draft, via trade, whatever, they need to knock it out the park. All eyes seem like they are going to select this pick. They are not going to maneuver. They don't seem like they're going to trade off of it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you that Stefan Castle, believe it or not, it was a lot of things going on about Stefan Castle uh, that he was not going to work out for the Charlotte Hornets. But I'm here to tell you that all of that has come to a screeching halt. And um, he has pulled up and the Hornets have worked him out along with a couple of other guys that I'm going to bring to your attention. Uh, the Hornets is, is very interesting. You know, a lot of people, not just myself, a lot of people would like for the Charlotte Hornets to select Stephon Castle. But a lot of people want a lot of other players that may slip. They not part of me. They just not going to be on the board. Who knows who's going to slip? There's a guy also who I'm hearing the Hornets are high on. His name is Reed Shepard. I'm going to get into him as well, uh, the Kentucky shooting guard. So clearly the Hornets are looking to put something in the backcourt with LaMelo, you know, um, and Brandon Miller. Because uh, Brandon Miller, he, this guy, he can play the two. He could play the three. So I think if they brought a guy in like Stephon Castle, who I think is going to add to what the Charlotte Hornets already have done, you know, um, all of the things that he brings to the Charlotte Hornets, something that they haven't had in some time. You know, um, we are talking about defense, and that's something that the Hornets need to improve on. You know, um, a lot of their guards, you know, when you think of the Dennis Smith Jr., part of me, Nick Smith Juniors, you know, um, guys like that, you, you you think these guys are scorers. They're not stopping anybody. People are just looking to, to take him. And, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, so Stephon Castle, to me, in my humble opinion, just brings something different to what the Hornets um, have right now. People are comparing him to Josh Hart, even in his ceiling, maybe a Jimmy Butler. That's what a lot of people are saying. That's what the draft boards are saying. Also, the things that he brings. You know, we're going to get into the strengths and the weaknesses of this guy, Stephon Castle, who out of UConn, we all know um, from Atlanta, we all know he went to Newton High School. Um, shout out to my man, Jabaz Jenkins. You know, he played with him. Um, it is a very interesting situation that's going on right now. My man Jabez, his teammate in high school, he's going to be playing in Belmont too. Make sure y'all go check him out. Uh, Jabez Jenkins, I'm telling you, this guy's going to the league. Um, but I want to tell you also, he brings efficiency at the rim. Um, we t last year. And I want to bring this up because a lot of people might say, why are you doing why, why guard? Why this? Why? You know, my Stefan Castle can play the two alongside LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball is a pass first guard. You understand? He's a facilitator at heart. You understand? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so I want to tell you, like I said, um, it, it was a lot of speculation between, you know, Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson. In my humble opinion, I think you basically could get the best of both worlds here. You know, you got Miller. Miller's the guy who's going to fill it up. Pause. He's going to he's going to put fill up the stat sheet offensively. I think this guy got potential defensively as well. You know, um, along with Mark Williams, I think that Lamelo don't get enough credit for getting in the passing lanes. You know, his his arm length, his wingspan, he's utilizing that. Um, a lot of people want to see probably LaMelo become a lockdown defender, but a lot of the onus is on him to basically do everything on the other end. So a guy like this, when the Hornets have to take LaMelo out, Stephon Castle could run the offense efficiently. You understand? Um, he's got great court vision. You know, um, who on the Hornets outside of Meech showed us a little bit, but I'm talking about this guy is going to be in for the long haul. You know, LaMelo could sit on the bench and the offense won't just fall to a complete collapse. People will still be getting involved. The offense will continue to flow. 
You know, these are things that I'm looking at when LaMelo was out of the game. I think that you shore this up right here. You know, ain't nobody just signing here. This is not a free agent destination. Let's see what Charles Lee does with his staff. But I'm just telling you, you know, um, this guy, Stephon Castle, he's got a 6'9 wingspan. He's 6'6". Six, six. Um, you know, like I said, I, he's he can go anywhere from three to six. But all eyes to me, I don't know what, what um, pardon me, what San Antonio is going to do. I could see them either going with Stephon or even Rob Dillingham. It's going to be interesting because you don't really know what these teams are going to do until we get to that point. You know, so we just got to really just hold it down. Um, and my, like I said, defensively, he, his communication, I'm just uh, thinking about how he could be, you know, helping communicate along with Mark Williams, who I believe can emerge into that defensive stopper that the Charlotte Hornets believe he can be. You know, so I just think that Stephon Castle ch checks a lot of boxes. Um, in, in his one year, UConn, he averaged 11 points, four rebounds, two assists. He shot 47% from the field. He's not known to be a three-point shooter. Scoot Henderson wasn't either. You know, and a lot of people thought, hey, let's get scoop. Let's get scoop. You know, uh, for it's very interesting with Stefan Castle because it was rumors going out that he's not looking to work out for teams that already have a lead guard in place. You know, um, and it was kind of crazy that that came out because a lot of people will say that nobody sacrifices much of their game on UConn is Stefan Castle. You know, so I think that he can come into the Charlotte Hornets. The Hornets, to me, is not a team. Well, as long as you got LaMelo Ball and he's healthy, I think that you could scratch into the postseason. Let's see what they do with Miles. You know, but clearly, LaMelo, Miller, and Williams, that's something. You know, now you add something else to it. Um, and I think the Hornets could be right back into – um, scratching and clawing to get into that um, postseason, either whether you got to crawl before you walk. So if they can get back to that playing situation where Borrego had them, you know, I think not, not, and then possibly even further, don't shoot for the play. You know, obviously, let's see if the Hornets can be that surprise team. I like what Charles Lee is doing, inviting the Charlotte Hornets down to Boston so they can celebrate with the team as they pop champagne. I love that. You know, who knows how you – I'm hearing Charles Lee, he's going to be coaching the summer league. He's looking to, to, to shake this whole thing down from all facets, from the summer league to the people that may not be with the Hornets to obviously our starters. So it's, it's, it's interesting, man. It's the, the clock is ticking, man. Um, And let's see what the Charlotte Hornets do in this draft. But um, like I said, they are looking to – get my man um stefan castle you know back to my man reed shepherd you know it's going to be interesting to see what they do because i'm hearing the hornets are high on him as well you know so is, let, let me know what y'all think um who should they what should they do you know shepherd is another shooting guard who could do some things um i think he's a guy that could obviously put the ball in the hole so all these guys fit alongside LaMelo. You ain't going to tell me this. Nobody can fit. LaMelo's the kind of everybody can fit alongside of him. You know, so this is, look, we're going to be waiting. Time is ticking. It's Flight Sports TV. Peace and love. Make sure you subscribe for more Hornets news updates and more as we patiently await the draft. And we're going live tonight. Peace and love.